All right. Welcome, everyone. Go in five minutes, episode 30. We made it 30 episodes. Uh, and today we're going to continue the Buffalo series. Um, we're going to talk today about integrating a database into your app. So we've talked about front end stuff. We've talked about templates and routing for HTTP requests. Uh, and most recently, we did login with GitHub. Uh, and that stuff is important, but equally or maybe even more important is uh, dealing with storing data. Most web apps have to store data for your users and keep track of you know, what people are doing or whatever it is that's specific to your functionality. Luckily, uh, Buffalo has awesome support for databases. Um, it has a thing called the POP library, which is separate from the Buffalo repo. Uh, and you can actually use POP as sort of an ORM uh, in your own framework if you want. Uh, but Buffalo has awesome integration with POP too. So like the code generation, uh, it's got really, really good code generators for generating like POP models. And we'll see that in a second. Uh, but also just like the integration in the actual Buffalo runtime and the framework fits really well with POP. So um, without further ado, let's go check out uh, the models. So um, basically POP has a simple, a little bit of simple code to like create a database connection. Uh, we've got like a Go environment, uh, based on the environment, POP will connect to the database that we specified. And those environments are set up in this database.yaml file. Uh, so we've got, in this case, development, test, and production environments. Uh, these are what's generated by default. Uh, so ours is by default going to be development. Uh, so that is this thing, Postgres DB on localhost, and there's a username and password there. Uh, and this is all set up, and POP just looks at that file by default to set everything up. So this happens in the init, so that's right on startup. We basically connect to the database and populate that variable. And that variable is used all over the place, uh, primarily from the actions, which has the HTTP routes. So I mentioned sort of in passing just now, pop is an ORM. So let's look at how to create a model for that ORM. So it's pretty simple, right? It's just a struct, as you might have guessed. Um, and if you didn't guess, well, it's a struct. Uh, and all the stuff is driven by struct tags. So every pop model basically has these three things. Uh, and if you're from the Rails community, and I think some of the other programming language or framework communities, this will probably be familiar. There's a primary key, which is an ID. And in the Buffalo world, it's a UUID. And then we've got a created time and an updated time. So all of the pop models are gonna have that by default. Any model that you generate is gonna just automatically get that uh, and you'll be good to go. I've added one more field. Uh, so for a to-do, uh, we're gonna have a title for that to-do. We could add more later, and in a future episode, we'll see how you would do that. Uh, but for now, we've just got a title. So this code and all of the code we're going to see in action, so that's like the database migration code, the templating code, the actual routes, all of that was generated in one go with a single CLI command. So there's a lot that was generated. We're going to dive into each of those different pieces sort of in each episode, or we're just going to see this stuff at a high level now. But basically, this is like the, the most basic, most important piece of pop and of all the database stuff you're going to do with Buffalo. It's all driven off of this struct with these, these uh, DB struct tags. We've got ID, created at, updated at, and title. If you go down here, there's some more optional stuff. Uh, the most important optional stuff you might want to touch in the future would be the validation stuff. So this is like a callback that gets created uh, and run by pop. Uh, in this case, like right before a create was happening or right before an update was happening. So without further ado, that's sort of the most basic, most important part of database integration and pop. Let's go and actually run this thing and see what Buffalo has generated for us and what happens. So first thing is, I'm gonna run make uh, start dash db. Uh, I am gonna run with this a local database, a local Postgres database, and it's driven off of Docker. 
so I have this Docker Compose file. It's basically running a Postgres database uh, in the background. So now that the database is running, uh, I've got these database migrations. So pop comes with this whole migration system. Uh, so I'm going to run the migrations to set up the table and all the columns in the table. So we just do a Buffalo DB migrate up. You can see it's creating the to do's table and then it's creating that title column as well. So now I've got the database up. I've got all the tables set up with the right types and the right columns. And now I'm going to do my Buffalo dev. So Buffalo dev starts up on the same exact port we're used to, port 3000. All the JavaScript business is taken care of. And now I'm just going to head over to the page. So uh, I'm actually going to head over to the index page because I had some old to do's up before. Uh, and this, of course, this is the vanilla Buffalo index page that, get generates, that gets generated by default. But we've got some new uh, rows here. Uh, you might recognize this if you've done resources in Buffalo, and we did that in a past episode. Uh, but basically, this is all the stuff that was generated from to do's, uh, listing to do's all the way down. So let's go over to the list. There's nothing, of course. We're going to do a create. And we're going to do a to do for do more episodes on pop and database integration. Can you tell here that I was uh, testing this before? So I had already written the title do more go in five minutes episodes on pop and database integration. So I'm going to save that. Uh, now we have a specific to do with this ID. So this is the actual UUID that's in the database at that primary key. I can go back to all of the to do's. Now we've got a to do in there. Um, this is all from generated code again. So we can go and edit it. We can go do the edit. We can do a save. Now the thing is saved. And then the final piece of the puzzle is deleting it. So we're going to do the deletion and now it's gone. So all this stuff is generated by a single CLI command. It's a Buffalo generate command. Um, we've got all of our database code set up, uh, and then we use Docker and Docker Compose to set up the actual database to get it running. Uh, and then we basically just do some migrations, which is also handled by pop, uh, and we're off to the races. Okay, so that was a super high level, super fast sort of whirlwind tour of pop and all the Buffalo database stuff. Uh, there's each sort of piece, and I touched a little bit on each little piece of the puzzle. So we're going to dive in deeper to each of those pieces in future episodes. So make sure to come and check those out as they come out. Uh, make sure to check out the show notes for this because I've got links there to the pop library and the Buffalo documentation uh, for how to do all this stuff within the context of Buffalo. Um, and then also just go see if you can put pop into your web framework if you're not using Buffalo. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, I'm super excited for the 30th episode, uh, and I hope to see you for the 31st. Take care, everybody.